when we hear healthy lifestyle or healthy eating, we immediately almost always think expensive, right? But the good news is that your financial goals or responsibilities don't have to keep you from reaching your health goals. Hi there, I'm Dr. Ravine Chama Virgo. I host a free program called Health Talk Sundays every Sunday at 5 p.m. via Zoom, where we invite different speakers to present on various aspects of health, which can include the physical, mental, financial, social, spiritual aspects of health. And it's really just raise awareness and educate on those different categories. And last week, I shared eight strategies on how to live a healthy lifestyle while on a budget. The presentation was recently shared in the Jamaica Gleaner, a nationally published newspaper. So I posted a full presentation here for you all to enjoy. Have fun! All right, so the topic for today is we are living, is living on a healthy, thank you so much, Vivia. It is healthy living on a budget, right? And um, this is going to be sort of a crucial topic because right now we or even years now, especially since the pandemic, right? We're living in a, a tight economy and really trying our best to cut down on expenses itself, right? And uh, so we're trying to save more, whether it's for the future, because you have your priorities in place, right? I'm sure every one of you here on the call as well joined for a reason. You know, you have your priorities in place. You know, you know that you have to pay your loans, your bills, you have to set aside uh, some fun savings for your children, saving for that retirement, right? And um, doing all of that, you know, something is there saying to you that you have to do something for your health as well. And uh, so you're thinking about all those things you have to be putting aside funds for, but you want to be talking about your health. And um, many persons do view being healthy or living a healthy life, that life as luxury, right? And sometimes it's because of what's really seen on TV, that, you know, maybe or on social media where seeing a health, living a healthy lifestyle is being portrayed like as... Uh, um, Maybe you'll see like some juice cleanses or, you know, you'll see those healthy food that are just that are a bit pricier. Or you might see, you know, think about the gym membership that a lot of persons are doing. But I want to tell you that living a healthy lifestyle does not have to take money away from your financial goals. And there are several strategies that I wanted to go through with you here today. I wanted to ask you a few questions as we go along here. So how many times has anyone ever heard that living a healthy lifestyle is expensive? Can put it in the yes, put a one in the chat if you've heard that before. Because I want to go, okay, so I'm seeing a lot of yeses coming through. And uh, yeah, and then a lot of time we think about, you know, bangles, fruits, or vegetables, you know, thinking about it's going to break our wallet, right? And then you kind of stray away from it a little bit. But with these things that I'm going to be showing you here today, you can see it can actually help you to achieve those financial goals that you are trying to get. So follow me a little bit before we even get started, right? So let's say you're providing your body those nutrients that nourishment it needs, right? So you're performing better, you're more energized, you have more time to spend with your kids, your family, you're more focused at work, you are you have a healthier immune system, you're stronger to more like to fight, stronger and free to fight illnesses and stuff. So that means less sick days, right? So that means less money spending on the doctor visits, less money spending hospital visit bills. And if you're focusing more at work, you're showing up more for work and doing performing better. And your boss, and let's say you, and you have a boss, and they recognize this, then it could mean a pay raise for your promotions. And that's just coming from providing your body with some nourishments there, right? And that's a beautiful thing right there. And you're going to see things like that going through this presentation. You'll see how there's several ways that living a healthy lifestyle can help save, save, um, save, save money for you as well for the future, as well as we can also cut further expenses too. And you'll see that we'll be going through eight strategies that can help you to lead a healthy lifestyle while on a budget. So we're looking at exercise, meal planning, restaurant in the kitchen, that's something I made up. Backyard gardening, kicking the unhealthy habits, do-it-yourself home cleaning kit, free self-care, and regular checkups. So if you're ready to get started and for the presentation to get started, just drop a two in the chat for me now so we can start talking. All right. So physical activity, right? We know, like, studies upon studies show that being less active, right? Living that sedentary lifestyle, we see over and over that, you know, sitting too much is linked to higher risk for diseases, whether it's diabetes, heart diseases, or even early death. So we know the benefits. I did list a few, but even though we know them, it's going to quickly go through some of them, sorry, because there are a lot of benefits there. Reducing your risk for heart diseases, strokes, improving your memory, helping you sleep better. Weight um, helps to lower your weight gain as well, which means less risk for obesity better bone health as well. So a lot of health benefits for getting exercise. Now, when we know this, right, the thing is that we know it has numerous health benefits, but the problem is that 
there's several factors that can uh, limit persons from being more active. Sometimes it can be because of the job that they have, like a desk job. You're not really as active, you're sitting a lot, so you don't get to move as much as you'd like to. Well, there are, and there are other factors as well, and this is one of the biggest ones that I've heard, is that, you know, I'd love to get in shape, I really want to get more active, but I don't have the time to go to the gym, or I don't have the money to go to the gym, to pay for a gym membership. Because, yeah, those things do add up, right? And sometimes you can just be working one or two jobs that, you know, this so much be the time. But, yes, going to the gym is a fantastic way to keep in shape, right, to get stronger and be more active. But it's not the only way. And I like to say this now, so the world is your gym, right? You don't need, so it doesn't necessarily have to mean the traditional gym. You can, to be physically active, you, you can use the outside exercises, exercising at your home. And, you know, I'm going to give you the definition as well for what physical activity is. And I'm going to show you, it doesn't even have the word gym in there. So, like, according to American Heart Association, a physical activity is anything that moves your body and burns calories. So, like, walking, climbing the stairs, stretching. They mentioned the gym there right so yes there are different levels of intensity different levels of activity based on you know, based on what you want to do or what it is that you have for your goals what i'm saying is that there are things that you can do and that's what i'm going to show you and it's free physical activity so you have the outside exercises where let's say you're jogging you're swimming you're hiking right you can do exercises at home as well right so you even put your children involved as well too because you know children do need to be active too you know there was a time, I mean, I remember years ago, children were more active um, back then, you know, they were playing games outside, but now a lot of time they're stuck to the screen, so they're not as active as they used to be. And children can be at risk for the same chronic diseases that we used to see in older persons. We're seeing them in younger kids now more frequently. So that even the obesity, that type two diabetes, which persons used to call an older disease, we're still we're seeing it in younger persons now. So. Even though children may be more resilient and stuff like that, they still are at risk and really want to help them to embark on a healthier journey. By starting early, it's easier for them to continue into adulthood versus breaking the bad habit when they're already doing it. You know, so if they're not used to, let's say if they're used to eating chocolates and sweets, by the time, you know, let's say they're older, they want to quit, it does become harder for them to stop there. I know I went off track a little bit from exercise, but just wanted to show right there how you can um, just still get children as active and healthy as well. And it can be fun, you know, exercising with the children. It can be a sport activity as well. Now, there's also free exercise routines, videos, and trials that you can um, look on the internet. You know, if you go on the internet, you'll find lots of exercise videos. Those are the trials of free apps as well are also on the phone that you can look and get some exercise routines to there as well. Now, let me see, there's also free exercise group sessions. Ms. Howden did mention some today as well. So for Fit and Fabulous, where we also do, we have coaches Nicole, Melissa, and some other coaches or certified fitness trainers. And every Tuesday and Thursday, they uh, at 5.30 a.m., they have an exercise session. You can take a screenshot. I'll pause for a little bit here. All right, so there you go. And then for those now who are looking for to become, to actually to become stronger now and want to lift weights, but not ready, not ready to invest in a in the weights itself, or not ready to invest in a gym. You can think about looking at your household items. So a one pound is like a can, that like a sixteen ounce can weighs a little bit approximately one pound. A one liter bottle can weigh two pounds. Uh, the gallon, one gallon water, about eight pounds. So different different things can be used to help assist with when you're trying to strength train. And for the recommended physical activity, this is from WHO. So as you see, they do put for even children activity there as well, like 60 minutes per day for an adult. They have 150 minutes per week, to, which is like about 20 minutes per day or 30 minutes, five days for the week. Now, the thing is, not everybody right now has been physically active. So you could just be starting out completely new not, not, and you wanted to start and you're not sure where to start or you know, 150 minutes could look a lot to someone who's starting. But the thing is, just start somewhere. You know, start slow, go at your own pace, gradually increase to your target. And it can really just be simple as just starting by by walking. And if you're someone who has difficulty walking, you know, whether it's due to pain or some other reason, then, you know, you could be on a chair, you can just do some, um, just moving your hands and moving what you can. And you can also break up the activities into short, like a few minutes, like five minutes for the day, Sorry, five minutes, several times through the day. Now, this part is very, very important. So um, 
if you are new to exercise, right, or have a new to exercise, you're changing up your routine or have an underlying illness at all, right, very, very important that you consult your physician to find out what type of exercise and intensity is safe for you. Because going to that physical activity, you just want to be sure that you know what is right for you, especially like how it's new. Okay, so that was the first, first step. Now, see, going so far, seems so good, right? Now, second now is meal planning. Now, I'm going to show you this in about three steps here, right? So planning and start your planning ahead. And you've always heard that person will say that planning is like the key to success. So you're going to see here how it works out for you, both financially and health-wise. So if you're planning ahead, one of the things that, let me ask a question actually. Have you ever gone to the supermarket and bought, let's say, some rice, some scallions, some onions, and then you come home and realize you already had some at home? Maybe it wasn't even those items, but something else. So sometimes when we might manage get to make that shopping list and we go and buy things that we already have because we didn't get the chance to do an inventory. Versus if we go through the kitchen, you can find out what you already have. Then when you create that shopping list, you end up not buying as much, buying extra then. And then that can help you reduce wastage as well of the food. So going through, and then you might even realize by going through your cabinet, your kitchen, that you may not even have to go to the supermarket that week. Or you can actually use what you have right there to create some meals for that week. So second, now you're writing down that plan of what you're going to eat and then use that now to make a shopping list based on what you don't have. A little tip is that when you're creating those meals, try and use, try and find recipes that have the same ingredients. That way you're not buying too much, too many items at once. All right? That also, again, helps you to kind of cut down on what you're spending at the supermarket. Let's go to the next thing. Some shopping tips that I want to give you as well to help you cut down as well on the expenses. So don't shop when you're hungry. That's the time when we tend to go, go a little crazy and buy more than we need to after those sweet, um, salty things. I can tell you that has happened to me when I get this. So I'm, I always try to make sure that I eat before I go to the supermarket. Buy fruits in season. Those tend to be a little bit less expensive. Buy fruits and veggies like whole instead of getting the ones that are already cut. You know, that does work out a bit better as well in terms of the price. So you wouldn't want to appealing it then. All right. Next is the seafood then. A lot of times, you know, we think about seafood being expensive, but you can also try like for canned seafood, like tuna, sardine, mackerel, because we do need some fish in our diet. Right. So okay, there's other things you can try as well. Mix up the protein. I like, get some plant-based protein as well, like canned beans, peas. I think they have the dry ones as well. You can decide which one you prefer. One thing to note but we're still talking about being healthy. When buying the canned beans and the peas and the canned foods, then try and get the one that says low sodium or no sodium. You mean sodium is the salt. So you want to try and get those that don't have that added salt in there. And then just in case, when you do open it, rinse it, um, drain the liquid and then rinse, rinse it with water to help get rid of any, if there's any salt or anything in there. Again, we're being healthy, but cutting down our expenses. Now let's say we're doing the protein. Um, Choosing leaner cuts of meat is healthier. If you're buying chicken now, um, a whole chicken would like would be a little bit more cost effective than buying a mixed parts. But if you love the mix, if you love or you want the parts, I think the the drumstick that's the pet, the legs tend to be um, cheaper as well than if your other mixed parts. So those are little, little things you can look at, but they can add up to make a big difference at the end. All right, so you can consider making you can start consider as well buying some things in bulk depending on it, because it will last long, depending on the things that you're buying and the cake, some you can freeze, so you can store in a way that it can last longer. And it does tend to be at a cheaper price when you buy in bulk. All right, next is checking for sales, like discounts that, that, that the companies and supermarkets may have, and going and rolling into their discounts and reward programs. So I know like Ms. Howder mentioned Icon Mega Store earlier, they do have an, an, a discount or reward program that for the customer they can use as well to help get that. And that does make a significant difference as well. Okay, now we're going to the third step, which is prepping meals. And again, some more tips in how you can help the cut on expenses here. So have you ever heard the term, um, time is money? No. How much on average do you think you spend in the kitchen when you're prepping a meal? Let's like, say you're cooking dinner. I'm just going to wait a little for this one. Let's say you cook Sunday dinner. How long do you think you spend in the kitchen to cook Sunday dinner? All 
I'm not seeing the chat yet, but on average about, okay, so I see three hours here for someone, right? I was counting on average about two hours. So let's say everyone cooks. So I see three and, and one hour coming in. But let's say it was an average two hours, right? And if you cook every single day, right? Um, Let's say that's about every single day. Let's, let's go with 14 hours. We cook once a day, right? That's 14 hours per week. Now meal prepping could actually save you so much more hours. So you could actually reduce that, right? You could save six hours. Now that's six hours of time you could be using to, to work on your side business, you know, and start earning some passive income afterwards. So wouldn't you want to do what you can to cut down on some time and still be healthy and work on something else, right? That's going to be making, help you make money. So this is where meal prepping does make things a little bit easier. So like cleaning up and cutting the meat from early on, basically you already know what you're going to cook. So you know if you're going to curry it, you cut it smaller. If you're going to do big, you cut it a little bigger. And then you put it to freeze until you're ready for it or until you're ready to cook it. So those are, simple little, those are some little things that you can do. Same thing for the vegetables and um, the herbs and stuff. You could actually cut them up and freeze them. So that way you're saving and cutting down the time that you have to spend, spend pre preparing the different meals. Now, I want to say a little bit about how you can actually stretch the meals a little. So we know that protein is one of those new big nutrients that we need to get. So how can you stretch the meat um, to last longer to serve more? Two ways. So you can add, remember those beans and peas that I mentioned? Adding that to your meal can help you help that one meal last longer and still get the required nutrients you need just by adding beans and peas. And I see vegetable as well. So someone mentioned vegetable right so yes vegetables too so vegetables add those beautiful vitamin and minerals in meat and they also give you fiber which helps you to feel full longer all right and so that means if you're feeling full longer you're probably going to eat less right and less um, of those unhealthy foods too okay really enjoying the engagement you get that's coming through okay so that's another tip as well so you can add those vegetables those beans and peas to help stretch the food a little bit more use those leftovers as well to create another meal if you're vegetables or fruits are you know getting a little overripe can put them in smoothies or the veggies can go in soup as well so those are a little bit there of some tips there okay then my restaurant in the kitchen <laughs> what this means is that's cooking at home so we're on to the third point here so cooking more meals at home i wanted to share there are a lot of benefits here and this and got a source there from john hopkins where they did a research that shows that Persons who uh, cook more at home, they eat healthier. They tend to eat healthier and consume less calories. So then those who actually don't cook as much. So that means you can still eat or enjoy eating out, yes, but because you're home and you're cooking a meal, you have um, more control over what you're eating, what goes into your food, and the portion size as well. Right, so a lot of benefits there. Right, so, and it also helps to cut down on the expenses. And I did a few calculations I'm gonna show you in a little. But I want to talk about that portion size and what goes into your food. If so, let's say you most times when you eat out, right, the fast foods especially they tend to have higher sugar, salt, and fat content, which is not good, not so good for the um, for your health. When I'm talking about the fat, I'm talking about unhealthy fats. So, which is why when you cook at home, you have more control over there. And I wanted to talk a little bit over the portion size and how even that can help you to feed, to save some, um, save some extra income um, money as well, while still being healthier. So usually when you go out, the portion size tends to be a little off, you tend to get more of the starchy carbs that the rice, a little bit of veggies, and the protein tends to be a good size. So I wanted to go through and show you a little bit of an example of how it helps. So you and your plating, you have an idea. So when you feed your body, the right amount of nutrients, right? You feel satisfied longer, right you feel full longer and then you need to eating less on impulse like we spoke about earlier right so you're getting all of that fiber from the vegetables and the starch and some of the greens the whole greens here as well and then you're having that protein that does help you to keep full longer too so let's uh, make things simple if you fill half of your plate with vegetables or fruits quarter of your plate with the whole greens and quarter of your plate with a healthy protein and a small amount of the healthy fats then that helps to give you a nice little idea of what portions look like it's the fiber, those nutrients, you know, can help to lower cholesterol, help to lower blood pressure, you know, also help with um, blood sugar control as well and help to maintain a healthy weight. And so that's just an example I wanted to show regarding how the portion size can even help there. Now I mentioned, also let me bring this up, then I mentioned also 
eating out. So again, there's nothing wrong with really eating out now and again, but just that want to be more mindful of it. And I want to show you how much um, can be saved by uh, maybe just cooking at home and then carrying it with you, whether it's to work or, or to school. So right now, an average um, lunchbox probably costs around 700, some places probably more. And if you were to buy it five times a week or 20 times for the month, that would be 14,000 Jamaican dollars. Right, so that's 14,000 you could probably be saving by you cooking your own meal and carrying it with you to work. Another example that could be do, another su suggestion, you could also um, consider swapping uh, one meal with a quality meal replacement shake. This helps to save time, reduce expenses, and also produces, um, provides the body with like adequate nutrients. Remember we spoke about those, those nutrients and uh, providing the body right portion sizes. So a, pro a good quality meal replacement shake can help with that as well. So just to give you an example of the numbers. So if you were to do one serving of meal replacement shake of 350 and you replace 20 meals, one per day for, and we're not talking the weekends, then that will be 350 times 20, which is 7,000. So that would cut your expenses from the box food, which you didn't get to prepare, may not be as portion size, and that would have cut down $7,000 for you right there. For me, this is the one that I use right here for my meal replacement shake. Okay, now we're going into the backyard gardening. Now, these have several benefits. So we spoke about fruits and vegetables and how they can be more cost effective buying them in season. So I want to show you some health benefits based on different aspects of health. So they have nutritional benefits, right? Because it's providing those, but you're feeding you and your family that vitamin and minerals, antioxidants, it's less chemical because you have control over that, right? And then there's the physical aspect of it, right? Where you're going outside, you're getting the sunshine. So that's providing your body with some vitamin D, which helps to strengthen your immune system along with the nutrients, right? The good sunshine also helps with sleeping better. You're being more active, so you're burning more calories. Who's ever, who here has a garden, just a regular garden? Doesn't have to be like a fruits or vegetable garden. Let me see. Question I'm gonna ask you is, if for those who have a garden, no matter what type of garden, don't you find it therapeutic, very like, calm and relaxing just to go out there? Now that is a part of health as well. So your mental health is a good, is a very, okay, so I'm seeing in the chat, so a lot of messages came through. You don't have to reduce stress, you know, boost your mood and everything. So that's a big part of being healthy as well, right? So there are a lot of benefits there coming out just from having that gar backyard garden. And there's social benefits because when you involve the family in that, you get to spend time with the family. They get to learn from their children. They get to learn from when they're older, how to do it. And then you're socializing with neighbors as well, right? And as well, because maybe, because you'll be outside, you get to talk and socialize with them. So I wanted to show you a few benefits of that, going to the financial benefits now. So it has the potential to reduce monthly grocery expenses. So I, want, I took a few numbers. Let's say you bought one pound of tomatoes, one pound of lettuce, one pound of cucumber, right? And uh, that's about $1,300. And it probably feeds you for a week. This is what it worked out. So in terms of three tomatoes, one lettuce, two cucumber. Feeds you for a week, $1,300. Versus if you were to grow your own, I'm so sorry, they're a bit small. Hope you can see them, but I'll go ahead and read it. Versus if you bought the seeds or the plants, and you, it's about $200 for the seed itself, the seed packet. For like each of them, um, that's the estimated cost that I saw. And then uh, you can, based on that, after you start harvesting it, that could feed you for weeks to months. And that's $600 that you have spent on the seed packets, depending on where you buy, right? So that's a lot. And I'm telling you that the tomatoes, they continue to grow, the cucumbers. I'm going to show you mine. I have it on screen. So I'll show it to you in a little bit. But I did want to give you um, a few tips on how to get started. Won't go too much in depth with this. Um, we did do a presentation on Miss Camille, um, Camille Ambersley. She did a presentation on backyard gardening, how to get started. So if you'd like that, just send an email to Health Talk Sundays and we can get that to you. Because many, many benefits. So first you want to assess your climate, you know, um, the space you have available, the time you can dedicate. So many persons might not have a big space, no problem. You can start very small, you can even start with one that even if it's just one that can still be saving you a few expenses right there. And it can be, the, I've, you know, they can go in the tires as well. We have that, the big water jug where you can cut off the top and use to, that can be your backyard garden, 
At Icon Mega Store, they're giving away the free water jugs where you can just take it home and create your little garden right here. So you can reach out to Icon Mega Store to also get that. So they're giving it away for free. Now, other things that you can do is now decide now what is it that you want? Like what kind of fruits, vegetables, or herbs do you like? Do you like? Do you eat often and tend to be more expensive? It's better to grow what you like than what you don't like. And because then it kind of doesn't work out in your favor. And then start small, you know, um, until they can make the habit of it. Not everyone has the amount of time to really invest in a big garden. So let's research, research and plan it as best as possible. Again, just reach out for, to us for the presentation. We can give you some more. And then I mentioned the social aspect too, right, with your neighbors. Imagine encouraging your neighbors to start their own too. And then you are doing tomato and cucumbers. Your neighbor is doing potato and pumpkin. You can trade. Doesn't that sound nice? So then you have right there, you're doing so much benefits there and you're, you're socializing as well, right? So a lot of benefits just from that. You can take a screenshot of this. These are a few vegetables that can be harvested in about two months right here. And these are the ones for three to four months. You can just take a screenshot. So like less than two months, the scallion, which everybody uses, cucumber, lettuce, broccoli, and then three to four months, you'll see the tomatoes, the cabbage, um, some peppers. This was my backyard garden. This is how it started. Then here, and here are some of the fruits and well, some of the vegetables that's reaped from there. And it just kept, I mean, it was a lot better than I would get from a supermarket. And let me tell you, there's so much you feel, when you, when you have your own produce, you feel so amazing and so great when you realize that you did this. Okay. We are winding down. So um, skipping the unhealthy habits is a great way to save, um, to, well, to keep healthy and save some extra bucks as well, right? So like skipping unhealthy habits that are harming your health, like smoking and drinking alcohol. So like the smoking, right? We know that this is like the number one cause of a lot of diseases, like the cancer, those breathing problems, and the numbers do add up right it, the numbers do add up to the amount of packs that you're buying over if you were to calculate how much how many packs you buy per day or per week and then calculate for the year you'll see how much funds that you can save from there and if it is that you're having you know problem difficulty quitting and you know speak to your doctor they can help you like get a plan to um cut down on it same thing for alcohol. You want to reduce, like reducing the amount of alcohol consumption can save you a lot as well, health-wise and financial-wise. So let's take it two different um, ways. So let's say you're eating out at a restaurant and you order one or two drinks, right? It can actually double your bill. Because if you um, if you look at, let's say a beer, for example, it might be $500 in a bar, it might be $200 in a supermarket. So think about like, where can you actually cut down under the expenses there? Other thing is that if it is that you're um, drinking like beers, for example, four times for the week, um, for the month, four times for the week, when you calculate that, that'll be $8,000 per month. So that's, that's $8,000 that you could save or you could cut down. Let me see in the chat, it's coming up. So, okay, I'm seeing some homemade juice is coming through as well. So, and thank you so much for giving the different uh, other solutions as well. So those are some other things as well that you can do. And you can work it out. So sometimes when you're buying them, it seems like, you know, you pay for $150 here, there, and there. It doesn't seem like a lot, but at, in the end, they add up. So those are some of the things that you can look at to see where your money is going and how you can save. Now, this one here is one that tends to get overlooked sometimes when it comes to your health. This, and it's, so when it comes to cleaning agents, a lot of the chemicals that the cleaning agents use are loaded with like hazardous chemicals and uh, which harm to the health, which help, can affect your skin, your breathing issues, so many other health problems. Now, there are some that are becoming more green and more and are healthier or less harmful that can be used. But I did want to show a few and they can be expensive. Like maybe one bottle can cost $2,000 or more. And most times we have three different types of uh, cleaning agents. Now, there are some that you can just replace with that with something that you can make at home for yourself using like vinegar or baking soda. So I did, a, so I'm going to tell you a few that I use. So for like cleaning the glass or the mirrors, I'd use like uh, vinegar and water in a little spray bottle, spray on it and just wipe with a paper towel. And it shines the same way, it removes the grease. So yes, lime as well can help to it will be a cleaning agent too. Um, for a clogged drain, and many persons know this one, if you put the baking, put some baking soda down the drain and followed by a cup of white vinegar, you'll see that little reaction. 
and then let it sit for a little bit and add some hot water to it. It does help it clear it a little. Or you can use the snake drain to help pull out because sometimes it's hair and stuff that are clogging it. Um, mixing these three, like baking soda, vinegar, and cleaning, sorry, vinegar and dishwashing liquid, um, I can be used to like clean like the surface of some areas like the sink, the bathroom, and stuff. Different, different things. So there's simple little changes that can help to improve the health. Your health. Now, I think we have two left. So free self-care. A lot of time when we hear self-care or for ourselves, we think we have to wait for a vacation or to travel somewhere, right? But you can take care of yourself every single day. Your mind, your body, self-care is free, right? And there are healthy ways to just relieve your stress and they don't really cost much. Like going outside in nature, and we already spoke about that one right meditating you know getting or being grateful spending gratitude for yourself for getting in touch with your spiritual self which based on whichever religion it is right but there's so many things that can help with self-care i'll have a few uh, journaling your thoughts doing your own facial spending time with family and friends playing games just connecting with someone taking a break from work when you can sometimes you just need that little 10 seconds to take a deep breath or just two minutes just Get your thoughts together and just calm the mind back. Listen to music, deep breaths. There are various ways that you can um, take care of yourself. All right. Now the last one. Okay, so it was eight. <laughs> All right, regular checkups. Engaging in healthy behaviors. A lot of what we spoke about, right? So, you know, maintaining healthy ways, getting a regular physical activity, avoiding smoking. Went through all of that, those healthy behaviors. And yes, those help to lower your health risk, right? And of course, you mentioned how those could you know, help you avoid those costly visits. Uh, but let's not forget about the regular checkups. I have to pause for that one because it's very, very important. Now, regular checkups, they can help you to just stay well overall and catch problems early. So catching problems early before they become a major problem. So saving money on, med well, on medic, they could help you save money on medical treatments later on in life, such as medication, surgery, um, all those type of different treatments. Because if you catch it early and get a hang on it from earlier on, and if you can get that done, then it can help you to live longer, healthier life, and really enjoy that finance, that retirement that you set up for yourself. The thing about a regular checkup is that many times. In practice, what we see is that persons tend to come to the doctor when they're not feeling well. And uh, sometimes it's be like 20 years, 15 years since the last time they saw a doctor. And um, because you know, they've been feeling well. But the thing is, you can be feeling so well, nothing feels wrong. But on the inside, there's something terribly wrong going on inside. And sometimes by the time you get that happens, there's not a lot that can be done. So really want to get those checkups in, right? And for several, and that's just one one reason why. So we mentioned about the healthy behaviors, but there are also things we can't control, like our genes, right? So you go to your doctor, your doctor's asking about your family history, right? That helps you to figure out what you may be at risk for based on your genes. So you can start checking for those things earlier on. Right, so other things as well, like taking a social history, the smoking and the alcohol exposure, as we mentioned earlier. But I wanted to show you like an example of how getting that regular checkup is so important. So let's say a routine pap smear then for a woman, right? If let's say a woman gets it early, gets it on time, they see that there's something a little abnormal. So they take this, they start right away. And then they treat right away before it can become cancer and cause any problems. Versus someone who's never had a pap smear before, right? And decided, and then because they were feeling well, but then started having some abnormal bleeding. So they go and get it checked out. And they probably, and so, and then when they do the test, they realize that they do have cancer and it probably spread elsewhere in the body. This now means um, maybe chemotherapy, surgery, some medication, multiple doctor visits, right? And you remember how in the beginning, talked about sometimes you don't go to the doctor because you don't have time when that diagnosis hits they find the time there because you want to live your you realize how important life is so they're going to the doctor visits and it's a lot of visits a lot of treatment and it's not cheap either so if all of this could be prevented 
from an earlier visit and an earlier screening check. I think that's I think it's worth it. Getting that whether it's spending whether it's taking a half day off work or using a few hours of your day off just to get that routine checkup. Just to get that check to see if everything is okay. Is there something that you need to do? And screening now doesn't necessarily have to be expensive because a lot of discounts are being are being given throughout the year. Um, some screening checks are free, like blood pressure checks are free. Um, the weight checks, a lot of pharmacies do these for free, so you can just check with them as well. So you can go, so there are things that you can take advantage of too. Uh, when I talk about health risks, I mean regular checkups. I'm also including dentists and eye doctors too, so we know that. Um, for the average person, um, yearly eye checks um, for the dentist is usually um, every six months. Very, very crucial. Can catch things early on too and save money there. Because let's say for the dentist, for example, let's say you go there, right? You could get catch a gum disease early and get that treated versus if you wait too long, you may have come an infection, lots of pain that require extensive, expensive treatment. So again, all aspects of health we're talking about right here. And then this is a big one here too, taking medicine, medication as directed. So I mean, so not taking them overall or like not taking them as prescribed can lead to a lot of problems too, right? So these were just a few of the tips I wanted to share with you. So the eight strategies here, um, so free exercise, planning ahead, shopping smart, cooking at home, checking the backyard garden, kicking unhealthy habits, uh, reducing health risks um, and expenses with your own cleaning agents, free self-care and spending that few dollars for checkups to reduce potential big expenses. So as we go through, I just want to say that, you know, um, there are a lot of benefits there for caring for your health while you're still caring for your finances for you and your family's future. And I know I mentioned several options here today. I, know I went through eight and I went through different aspects because I want because you can go through and decide which one you want to start with. Because maybe you're already doing your regular checkups, right? Awesome. So then find something else that you could probably start right now. You know, just do it one step at a time. And remember to involve your family. Because when you involve them, it makes it easier for them to adjust. So it doesn't feel like overwhelming or deprived as well. And also helps to bring you and the family closer. So imagine you and your children, like your children becoming a little chef or they're coming in the garden and they're learning from an earlier age or they're wanting to shop. It excites them a lot too to be involved. So with all of this said, this helps you to say that um, you don't really need to put your financial or your health goals on hold. So you want to have your financial goals, you have those in track, you don't need to use that healthy lifestyle and excuse let's take action to lead a healthy lifestyle and that way you could really have the benefit of enjoying a life enjoying your future even more but now is the time to really start taking action and here i have a few resources that you can that we spoke about in the presentation so free exercise uh session tuesday and thursdays at 5 30 a.m you can take a screenshot the zoom mark the zoom sorry the zoom information is there also check out these presentations, the benefits of backyard gardening. It does help you to figure out how to get started with your backyard garden. Also gives you a few contact information to help you with yours. And creating your monthly budget um, is another presentation that was done on Health Talk Sundays. Very valuable information given there. You can take a screenshot and send us an email for the ones that you'd like. All right, well, thank you so much. <laughs> that was my presentation. Uh, thank you for having me on today.